So with the plugs all tightened up and punched over, we're about ready to put the cover on. I actually took the injector pump off because I was having a bit of a struggle to get the cover off. So I'll let's go over it again. This is a sleeve I had made to guide the camshaft oil seal over this shoulder because it is kind of tricky to do. Uh, I'm quite lucky because, but I've done a few of these, but it is quite common to bugger up the uh, oil seal and turn the spring upside down, well not upside down, but make it jump off the back of the seal. So I've got the, I've got the oil seals in place and they're all greased up. And let's put this back on. Now, I don't know where I am all in my editing now, I'm all lost now. But two flats on the crank should correspond with the two flats here. So we're going to put those in a vertical plane for this cover. This is upside down at the moment, but you couldn't see it the other way around. So let's apply that. Turn this. And we should see that doesn't line up quite right on the bump. Just a there goes the guide tube. I'm going to have to uh, just turn the crank just a hair to get this cover on. Uh, give me two seconds, I'll have to find the bolt. I think this is about take 33 now. This isn't going right this morning at all. So we've got to take our sleeve, our guide sleeve, put it on the end of the camshaft so we don't damage any seals. Uh, what I had a problem <laughs> What I had a problem with was I couldn't put the cover on because it wasn't quite lining up. So, hopefully, this time, we'll put our camshaft in. We can see that there's a camshaft sliding over there. Now, we just have to ease that pump and there we go. That's on. All it has to do now is settle onto the dowels, just like that. Take that off, easy peasy. All right, so that wasn't too bad. The next thing we've got to do is put all the bolts in and torque them down and tighten them down evenly. This is most important. So I'm gonna try and find a, shape, a piece of um, documentation from Land Rover to show you how we put the bolts in. Ha ha, did you think he was back? No. We're going to do this uh, 300 TDI engine. Just a couple of quick notes. That was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Um, tighten up the front cover on this, these engines, and you need to find your workshop manual because it gives you, there's actually a pattern to tighten them up. So you've got to do that correct, and it's 25 Newton meters. That's all. Don't reef and rave on them because otherwise that, that could distort the, the cover. I've put the pump on, so I've fastened that on first, then put the pump on. All that is nice and rigid now. So I'm going to do the belt. Now we've been, we've done this a thousand times before, we don't need to do it again. But, as, uh, as you can see there, I've got the seals in. The o-ring didn't come in the gasket set, very poor. So I've put the gasket, uh, I put the o-ring in, uh, just in case you need to know. It's ERR4710. These are OEM rings, which probably today means nothing. But anyway, we put those in, and uh, I'm going to build up this uh, kit. Now, I've got a, I've got an OEM uh, timing belt kit, so we've got the the correct. Uh, let me have a look. Should be Ina pulleys, and indeed. They are Ina. Just check the other one. <coughs> yep. Ina. Made in Slovakia. Is, is, don't we make anything anymore? I tell you. Well, I suppose it's a bit closer than China. So I'm going to build this up. We've got to time it up. And um, after that, we're sort of getting stuck for rods. I can put the front cover on, I suppose. Well, again, we've done that as well. Getting shorter things to do now. But anyway, 
I'll get on the, with that and then we'll uh, add a little bit more onto this video shortly. Seeing it's a bit quiet today because it's snowing and uh, everybody sort of let me down for machining and parts and towing and everything. I thought I'd rescue some of the day by having a look at this timing cover. I just put the belt on and if people want to know how I put the belt on without the flywheel well there's a little mark on the back of the casting to line up with the, the keyway but seeing there's got no pistons in it's really easy to turn over and I want to see how this belt's running. So I got a piece of plastic drain pipe and cut it down so that we can put the nut on keep keep some tension onto the end of the crank and then just spin it over and it's quite interesting so I'm going to move the camera and you can see what it looks like so if you can see here let's see if you can see here let's zoom in a bit and see if we can see yeah maybe down a bit like that you can see there's a gap between the belt and the guide and there's also a gap at the back which is extremely difficult to film but I'm going to spin this over a few times the rattling is my uh, lifting frame now it is running a little bit far forwards look what is causing that? This is a deco belt as well, so... The knock 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 is the injector pump. But although it's running forwards, it's not sort of... there's a sort of slight gap. But if I put my thumb on the top... Oops. Wait a minute, lost that there. If I put my thumb on the top of the belt, just ever so slightly, see how it runs back again. No pressure needed at all, then it runs back to its then it runs back to its happy space. I really don't know. What do you think? It's just a little tiny bit of pressure to push that belt back. I don't know. So I've turned it over about 30 or 40 times. Be better with a starter motor on. Thought to myself, I'll get one of these white pens, white marker pens, and put some white on the edge of the belt and see if it catches. As you can see, the ink's still wet, but it's not sort of smearing all over the place. I don't know what to think. I really don't know what to think. I don't know how I can adjust this much more. Uh, we'll have to have a we'll have to have a sit down and think about this because it's running now at the front of the belt, front of the pulley. Let me pull this camera back a bit and see what I'm talking about. If I just put my thumb just on here, just ever so slightly. See it runs back again. That's only just touching it. Is it out of, does it want a little bit more adjustment? I think I'll try it with a shim. I went back to my old method of putting a, a slight shim behind the uh, injector pump on the three bolt flange to move, to in effect move the pulley like this, to move it inwards a little bit, you know, to, towards the back. And uh, it does run a lot better down here, but it still doesn't run central. So I thought to myself I'd put my um, gauge on on the end of the pump. Let's have a look at that. Now, this looks interesting because this might be the answer I'm sort of looking for. See how it, it dumps in? So it goes, it jumps in and then it jumps out again. And it's every
straw. Now, how can I work that out? Oh, wait a minute. Right, so that would be roughly top dead centre. And then as soon as it goes off its firing stroke, it drops back. I wonder if it's the, the pump pulling in and out. I've seen that happen before. And it's therefore it's causing the belt to shimmy around. Hmm. I don't know what it is. There's something mysterious with this. Hmm. This is one of the things that... Uh, this is one of the jobs that sucks hours into your, out of your job. You know, like I say, you could spend the rest of your days doing this. I don't know. I really don't know what it is. It's not touching down here on the bottom pulley anymore. You see down here, the belt isn't touching at all. I can see, I can see light through the side, so that's a good sign. Um, I'm just wondering why it does it. You know, if I, all I've got to do is put my... All I've got to do is very lightly, in fact, I can do it sort of with my little finger. If I put my little finger on there, well, I can't because of friction, but, and, and that's all it takes to push it back again. Just a little bit of uh, force. So, is it shims? Is it the housing warped? I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. Hmm. I think I don't know. Has anybody else had this trouble? Because you see, when we took the belt off, it was all shredded at the front, front but it's got the proper upgraded uh, upgrade timing belt uh, kit on it. You know, the, the, pulleys, the guide pulleys used to be here. The, the guides on the pulley used to be here, not down here. But the belt used to shred on the pulleys. I don't know. I'm, I'm fairly satisfied that this is... Um, this is square. It's all squared up. I don't know. See, the thing is, I can't turn that dial gauge. Well, I suppose I could put a stopper on there and, and then turn it, but because we're only talking of a few thousandths of an inch, it might not work. I'll tell you what, we've got nothing to lose, let's have a go. I was just putting this video back together, trying to get some video together, and I just had a thought. It seems to be, when I was looking at the video, that this was pushing in and out. I'm just wondering whether that's its cause. Is that continuously pushing in and out and, and, and shimmying the belt across? I can't see how anything can be out of line here. The crank has to stay the same, the pulleys are the same, the cam doesn't move. It's got to be something with the pump moving and shifting the belt across, because like I said, all I need to do is do a slight bit of pressure and it pushes it back again. So I had a cup of tea and I thought about this. It might be a last resort, but it might work. What if, I know what, you see, I can see where that bolt hole is there, which is this bolt hole here. There's a big space here. What if I was to put an adjustable slipper with two bolts you know it's out, outside so it would just touch the belt just 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 to say touch the belt and then a little bit more because like i say when i rub that with my thumb it's, it's absolutely nothing and i thought well what if i got a, like a piece of nylon uh that would just push that belt back a bit so it's got a, like a guide at the top and, and just keep it in line the problem with that is, I can't find, I can't take the cover off and have a look and see if it's working. Well, I suppose I could do, I could bolt it on, turn it a few turns, turn it off, take it off. Oh, and if anybody's wondering, I've got that really, really sticky oil on the crank, so it's, it's cool, don't worry about that, it's not running dry. Um, I don't know, it's got me flummoxed, I don't know what to do. You know, I don't want the, uh, the belt to go again. 
But I'm seeing this more and off, more and more. I'm seeing belt problems, even when, even with this uh, sort of upgrade kit on. I don't know. Do you know? All Land Rover had to do, all they had to do, because they knew this was they, they knew this was a problem right at the beginning. These belts, put gears on it. <laughs> That's it. Like Zeus, or oh, Zeus, he used to make a tiny gear kit. That's all they had to do. Being simple then. But stuck with the timing belt. Hmm. What would you think? What would you do? There's something not quite right with it. And I don't know what it is. Like I say, I could go through an awful lot of expense. Is it an injector pump? It it used to run it used to run really good. So maybe it's a bit worn, maybe it's moving backwards and forwards a bit, I don't know. Or is this housing really buggered? I don't know. It's a tough, it's a tough call of fixing customers' jobs. Because once it goes out of there, I might not see it for an awful long time. But it's not the sort of thing you take off to have a look at, because it's got all the AC in and stuff like that, so it's really difficult to pull the cover off and have a quick peekaboo and see, uh, see how the belt's running. What a, what a nightmare. You know, you don't want it to snap. And these are all genuine, you know, the sort of OEM parts. So the pulleys and things, the pulleys can't be wrong. And the pulley on the crank, all it does is go round. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And you can't say that the, if I, if I slapped off the pulley and moved it forward, it would still move forward. That's the, that's the catch. It's still just moving just that little bit. Um, and it, it only takes about maybe 10 turns of the engine and it'll shove its way forward. So it's something's not quite right and I don't know what it is. Well, I really don't know what it is. You know, you could actually bolt all this back together and not know about it. You know, you just think, oh, I've done a belt and bang it all back together again and, and forget about it, it'll be fine. Maybe I'm too concerned about something that's not, not really happening. I don't know. What do you think if I put a slipper at the top there and just pushed it, pushed it back a bit? A bit, of, a bit of interesting engineering project. But I don't think nylon would cause any damage, especially if I made it sort of a, an, a long rounded, not a rounded, but you know, like it had a smooth lead into it. So it was just pushing against it and the nylon wouldn't damage the belt. It, in fact, it would eat the it would eat the nylon after a bit of time, but at least we could we could push it back on. Mm. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going to finish this video now and uh, think about it because honestly, I don't. I'm going to drink myself to death in tea, but I I, I can't figure out what the heck's uh, what the answer is. Uh -uh. But I don't like the way that that's pulling it in there. Anyway, we'll talk to you later.